Welcome back, everyone, to Inside Harvard Hockey. Bernie Corbett pleased to have with us Coach Ted Donato to get us started here, our March Madness NCAA Regional Special Edition of Inside Harvard Hockey, as the Crimson advancing after an ECAC championship in Lake Placid, New York, to the NCAA Regionals in Providence, Rhode Island, coming up this week to face the Providence College Friars in the opening game. And, uh, Coach, uh, Congratulations. Since we last spoke, you were coming to the final weekend of the regular season. And since then, you've, uh, well, you've added to the trophy case at Bright Landry and uh, officially wrapped up uh, at least a piece of the ECAC regular season title, uh, sharing that with Union, number one seed in the tournament, and uh, then advancing to Lake Placid where you won the Cleary Cup and uh, the Cleary Cup and then the White Law Cup as both ECAC regular season and tournament champions. So uh, congratulations on all you've accomplished. And, of course, uh, the biggest prize uh, awaits here, and that will all begin this weekend. Yeah, we're really excited, uh, Bernie. It's been, uh, you know, it's been a, you know, a, a very enjoyable season to this point. Uh, our guys set uh, very high goals, and, uh, you know, they've checked off the boxes, so to speak, uh, to this point, winning the uh, – the regular season title and, you know, a piece of it, and then winning the tournament title and the Bean Pod and the Ivy League. So uh, it's been a, a really uh, fun year. It's been, a you know, a, a great group, uh, great chemistry and teamwork, and, uh, you know, we're looking forward here to the national tournament. Now looking back, we, we left off. You, you came into the, the final weekend of uh, the regular season and a uh, little margin of error in order to uh, put yourselves in a position uh, to get uh, at least a share. It turns out that you got a piece of the title along with uh, Union and uh, had an opportunity to uh, to finish up uh, at, at Bright Landry, finish up strong. And uh, then, uh, as I had uh, talked about, uh, uh, you know, your reward, sometimes you don't know what the playoffs will bring uh, for uh, playing at home and being able to get that number one seed. Here comes Yale, <laughs> your biggest rival. You knew that that was going to be playoff hockey, uh, uh, and uh, cranked up a notch with uh, Yale playing for their life, playing for their season. And uh, it turns out that those were a couple games to uh, to really battle test you uh, in order to advance. wasn't easy to advance from that quarterfinal round. It's always tough to end a team season, particularly your uh, your biggest ancient rival. Yeah, it, you know, it's uh, you can throw the records out at that point. You know, the playoffs are always a new season. But, uh, you know, when Yale comes into town or we go into uh, – you know, into the well and, and New Haven, uh, you know, it's, it's always going to be a battle. And it was, it was, uh, it, it, you know, it wasn't a, a, a fun series to play in, uh, you know, all the pressure being on us, you know, having such a great regular season. And, uh, you know, we went into the third period both nights, uh, chasing the game. And, uh, you know, I give, give Yale a lot of credit. Uh, you know, they were hard fought games, but, uh, you know, but our group just kept coming and found a way to, uh, Win and, and win in, in two games straight, which gave us the uh, the Sunday off and made sure we were rested for the final weekend of the season. And uh, rested to uh, to come in and uh, have the opportunity to advance uh, to Lake Placid. And uh, for uh, folks that might not uh, be uh, familiar with what the uh, the weather scenario, I I was talking to some of the people venturing up and then venturing back from Lake Placid, and uh, uh, certainly uh, winter uh, we kind of dodged the bullet in Boston, but. You truly were going into uh, the hockey atmosphere in a winter wonderland. I heard there was was it an accurate total? It was about forty inches of snow up there in that area that you were navigating your way through. <laughs> yeah, it was funny, Bernie. Oh, you know, we were tracking the storm, and we were supposed to get hit with a huge amount here, and it yeah. didn't really, thankfully, uh, pan out that way. Um, and we were worried about you know the travel getting up there, and uh, we were pretty good around here. But uh, it seems like the storm shifted. Uh, you know, up north and into the mountains, and uh, we were, we ran into it up at Lake Placid, and it was a uh, a winter wonderland uh, <laughs> there for a couple days when we first got there. But uh, it is one of the places that really looks, uh, you know, uh, you know, just majestic when when the snow is there with the lake and the mountains. So it was a uh, it was a beautiful scenery, and uh, you know, we're we're always happy to make it, you know, to Lake Placid for the ECAC Final Four. And it seems like uh, you've been on a collision course here in recent years with Quinnipiac. Uh, they've really been uh, the, the new program with uh, Rand Pecknall that's emerged uh, in the ECAC, becoming a factor uh, both regionally and nationally. 
And uh, th- there they were again, uh, having to go through a Quinnipiac team that knew that their season was on the line. Their only chance to advance and a team that was in the national championship game a year ago was to win the tournament in Lake Placid. You knew that was going to be a formidable opponent and a real playoff atmosphere and a playoff test for you on uh, Friday night. And that, that proved to be uh, a very tight game and until it uh, really kind of turned into the Sean Malone show, one of uh, your uh, core of outstanding seniors taking over offensively. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of respect for Quinnipiac. I mean, they played in the national championship game last year. Uh, you know, I think their senior class, uh, you know, was in the top two in the country for the most amount of wins over a four-year period. So it's a proud group, uh, a group that was playing really well coming into the, you know, into the uh into Lake Placid, but I, but I thought our, our team stayed focused. Uh, you know, uh, we had a big game from Sean Malone, uh, you know, really his whole line as well, uh, Tyler Moy and Luke Esposito, and uh, we got a great night in the net from Merrick Madsen, and uh, it was a great team effort, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's always tough to end somebody's season, and, uh, you know, our guys were really focused and uh, were able to move past Quinnipiac. Got by uh, Quinnipiac on uh, Friday night in Lake Placid. Uh, the other matchup, uh, Cornell and Union, and uh, two teams that you've uh, competed real hard with uh, on the uh, Saturday uh, over the course of the year. You knew uh, who you'd draw in the championship, and it turned out to be the Big Red, and need no introduction from college hockey fans to just uh, how uh, great that Cornell-Harvard rivalry is, Ted. Yeah, it really is. It's, uh, you know, it's it's just something that has such, uh, you know, su- such, a, such a tradition, and the rivalry is great. Uh, both teams seem to you know, get very excited. It's another one where you can kind of throw the records out. But uh, you know, it, it was it was a, a great atmosphere. Um, you know, in, in Lake Placid. You know, good crowd. And uh, you know that that Cornell team is you know has had a great season and uh, you know hasn't lost much all year. And uh, we knew it was going to be a great test, and it was. You know, I think they knocked us back on our heels a little bit early in the game, but. Uh, you know, but we stayed with it, and uh, we're able to make some make some plays and start to take over the game with uh, with our speed. And uh, you know, it was it was a you know it was a great effort for our guys. Uh, you know, I think uh, last year losing in the championship game, uh, I think this group uh, felt there was some unfinished business in that ECAC championship game uh, left on the table for us. And uh, you know, this senior class now will. You know, have won two ECAC championships in the last three years and appeared in the finals three straight years. So, uh, you know, it's a great group. Uh, they provided great leadership and character for us all year, and uh, I was happy for our whole team. You know, significant uh, also when you look at uh, honorees uh, coming out of uh, Lake Placid and, and, and what it just, as you mentioned, just an overall team effort. And, of course, when, when I think of, of your team, I think of that great uh, core group of, of uh, senior leadership sometimes lost in the equation, uh, is uh, your goaltender, uh, Merrick Madsen. Uh, great to see Merrick uh, honored uh, by the ECAC, one of uh, the honorees uh, this week for uh, for his outstanding play in Lake Placid to uh, to elevate and bring it to that championship. Yeah, Merrick played great uh, both nights. Uh, you know, and, and, and I think uh, he, ma- he made the big saves at the big moments in the game to make sure that, uh, you know, we, we either, you know, stayed even or kept the lead. And uh, he was a rock back there for us. I was very happy for him to perform so well, you know, at such a key key uh, time of the year for us. And uh, he was great. And I think he made some, uh, you know, made some saves that gave the bench a tremendous amount of confidence and, uh, you know, allowed us to uh, sustain leads and, and uh, sustain momentum. Uh, so, it, you know, it was a great effort by Merrick this weekend and uh, very happy for him. Now, indeed the case. And, uh also, uh, honorees uh, this week, and among the honorees, along with Merrick Madsen, uh, another guy that uh, has been uh, outstanding for you, truly an impact freshman, and uh, maybe has been in the shadow a little bit. I think anybody will probably be in the shadow of Adam Fox and just uh, how uh, you know how tremendous he's been for you. But uh, great also to see uh, John Marino, uh, the other uh, freshman, the other rookie defenseman for you that's, uh, that's been a mainstay. Yeah, both those guys have had uh, tremendous years. Uh, obviously, Adam Fox is, has, you know, delivered uh, offensively, and uh, you know, I, I would argue uh, Adam Fox and, and Clayton Keller over at BU, have, you know, have had the two best freshman years across the entire country. Uh, and John Marino has, 
you know, uh, has done things a little bit differently for us. He's been a shutdown guy for us. Um, you know, he's, he's put up some good numbers, but, uh, you know, defensively he's been outstanding for us, playing, uh, you know, a big role on our penalty kill and playing against other teams' top lines. Uh, he had an outstanding weekend uh, in Lake Placid and was a big part of our success uh, in winning the ECAC championship. You look at uh, your team as, as you evaluate now and you go from, uh, winning one single elimination tournament, your league tournament, the ECAC, now the, the, the biggest prize of all, the NCAA tournament. And, uh, Coach, as as you evaluate uh, special teams and goaltending, talked about uh, Madsen being at a very high level, and uh, overall your, your special teams and your, your your power play is obviously the numbers, the percentages, but I think back to uh, your games this year, and it seems like it's been very timely. The percentages haven't been inflated. It seems like when you've needed a power play goal, your power play has come through, and, and you mentioned great depth that you have with two units that produced almost 27%. Yeah, and I think that's you know that's what you ultimately hope for is that uh, you know whether it's your power play or penalty kill, they can deliver at the important times in the game, and uh, and our, and both special teams really have. Um, you know, our power play, you know, has uh, has scored some really timely goals. Obviously, their numbers overall are in the top five in the country. Um, you know, but you know, at all times, they've always delivered momentum for us. And I think that's important that, uh, you know, that we, you know, we have a team that's got some great speed and skill. And, uh, you know, quite often we're faced with teams that want to be, you know, physical with us and try to slow us down. And, uh, you know, when we can be dangerous on the power play and deliver, you know, it, uh, it changes uh, the game quite a bit. And the uh, penalty kill not to be discounted, you get uh... – up 80, 82 plus, and uh, and that's uh, obviously that's been a, a solid unit in tandem in tandem with uh, Merrick Madsen, as you mentioned, to make sure you get the big kill and and sustain momentum, and oftentimes that can really energize your team to uh, to, to pick it back up when you get a big kill. Yeah, I think the uh, the the penalty kill is is uh, probably better than the numbers would suggest. I think we started out pretty slow at the beginning of the year. We've done some things a little bit differently, but. Um, but we've also, I think, scored uh, 12 shorthanded goals. So I think if you factored those in uh, to the numbers, you know, we would be, uh, you know, amongst the top teams in the country. For the, I believe we lead the country in shorthanded goals. So, right, uh, 12. So, you, yeah. know, we, we, you know, that's, uh, you know, that, that trade off there is, has been good. And, uh, you know, I think that's a, a team effort. We've blocked shots. We've made big saves. Um, you know, but the special teams... You know, especially when you get into that one-game format, uh, you know, you know, you need to be sharp, and uh, you know, we'll need to be sharp to continue to advance. And I and I got to ask you this question before we uh, talk a little bit uh, about uh, NCAA uh, matchup and 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 so forth, uh, Coach. Uh, being familiar with your program and uh, here locally, uh, injuries have been, and we've talked about. I know when I've had the opportunity to talk to you, such a big factor. It seems like. Uh, the, the hockey guards were kind of uh, in a position where they were going to have to uh, maybe uh, cut you a little bit of a break this year, and you, you've had uh, you've had great health to, with, with this team and, and with this group, uh, this great group of seniors to provide the leadership and to have the lineup uh, to be uh, uh, much less volatile than it, than it has been over the last couple of years when you've lost so many man games with key guys being in and out. Yeah, Bernie, I'm, uh, I'm knocking on wood. I am too. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> No, we've uh, it, it's been good. I think uh, you know guys have put a lot of work in the off season. Uh, you know the hockey gods right. have been good to us. Uh, we've we've remained uh, you know for the most part pretty healthy. We've had some guys banged up. Uh, one of the things that's helped us is that we have you know uh, a lot of depth, and we you know we're not relying on you know just a player or two or one line uh, or one defenseman. Right. So uh, it's been helpful. You know that even if guys aren't a hundred percent, we've we've been able to have them in the lineup. And uh, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't mention our trainer Matt Whalen, who's mm-hmm. done an outstanding job, really making sure these guys are, you know, are, cap- are capable of helping us on game night and managing, uh, you know, days off and and treatment and that kind of stuff. So it's uh, it's a, it's a very important part. You know, of a of a team's ability to have success, and uh, so far we've been very fortunate in that regard. You know, you get a you get a feel for a team, and uh, when you've been uh, around as obviously as a player, and you played at the highest level for a 
very long extended period of time and uh you 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 feel kind of where your gut is coach the identity is of this team um your goals were high coming into the season uh, has, it, has it been uh, pretty much, you know, that, that uh, this is a team that, uh, you know, has continued to raise the bar? Is it uh, something you kind of felt in your gut from the beginning of the year that this is that we could have a special year this season? You certainly have had one uh, to this point with uh, more to come. Yeah, I think uh, I'm, you know, uh, generally very optimistic uh, by nature uh, yeah. with our teams. But you know what? I mean, we, we've we've lost some great players over the last couple of years. Uh, obviously, losing the Hobie Baker winner last year and Jimmy Vesey, uh, Kyle Criscolo was a heck of a player for us. Uh, you know, Colin Blackwell. Uh, you know, the list goes on and on. Um, you know, I I, I did lo- like this team coming into the season. I thought that we, uh, yeah. you know, had a chance to have you know maybe a little bit more balance. You know, certainly. Uh, you know some new new uh, players on the uh, you know on the on the back end on the blue line, and uh, you know we've we've done things a little bit more by committee. Uh, you know up front we've had a lot of depth in scoring, and uh, you know I think I think at the end of the day the the real key has been um, you know that that nobody on the team is you know uh, is really concerned about. Who gets the credit for the success? I think we've had, you know, yes. everybody's uh, really shared that. We've really been focused on winning. It's been an incredible, uh, you know, uh, chemistry that the team has shared, and uh, you know, it's it's been a lot of fun. A lot of fun, and the fun will continue. The regional in Providence. It'll be down at the at the Dunk the Dunkin' Donuts Center. Crimson in action Friday, four o'clock. The number three overall seed in the tournament. And uh, your opponent, uh, close to home, uh, the Providence College Friars, uh, they are the number 14 seed in the tournament, uh, the fourth seed playing the one seed. And uh, your thoughts on Providence, you know, people have talked about your Crimson team, unbeaten, longest uh, streak at 15 games. Uh, as long as the team hasn't been named Notre Dame, Providence has been a pretty hot team. They're 13-0 and other than 0-3-1 and against Notre Dame, Coach. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think... Uh... You know they've had a, a little bit of a funny schedule towards the end. I think they played two teams uh, in their last eight games, uh, so it's a little bit of a scheduling, right? You know, uh, you know, uh, abnormality there. But uh, this is a good hockey team. I think uh, obviously very well coached. Uh, you know, a team that uh, you know improved throughout the year. Uh, you know, uh, turned over you know quite a bit of guys, so they had a you know, get everybody on the same page and into the proper roles. Uh, but, you know, they've, they've been as hot as anybody in the second half of the season. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a great challenge for us. Uh, we know they're, you know, very talented. Uh, they, you know, they, they bring a, a real workmanlike, you know, physical mentality, you know, each and every night. Uh, you know, Jake Wallman on the blue line is, you know, in, in the top handful of defensemen in, in, you know, in all of college hockey. So this is a great challenge for us. Uh, you know, we'll know, you know, we know that we're going to have to uh, really have a great night to uh, get by a tough Providence team. Stage is set, East Regional, once again, Friday, 4 o'clock. Everybody in Crimson Nation and following Harvard Hockey, uh, get down to Providence. There'll be a great atmosphere there for that one. Air Force and Western Michigan will be in the nightcap and uh, the winners will play on Saturday for one of the coveted spots in Chicago at the United Center for the Frozen Four 2017. Coach, thanks very much. As always, we appreciate your time. Uh, I was knocking on wood when I brought up health. Sorry about that. I picked right up on it. Uh, but I uh, want to wish you uh, the best to you and the Crimson uh, moving forward this uh, weekend, and hopefully we will be talking again in 2017 here uh, before uh, April uh, comes. That's that's the exact thing I was thinking, Bernie. Hopefully, we have uh, a <laughs> few more conversations. That means that uh, we'll have, you know, had some success this weekend and moving on. And I think uh, that's really our focus right now. Always a uh, pleasure to spend some time on the phone with you. In, indeed, Ted Donato, head coach of the Harvard Crimson, ready to take the Crimson the ECAC regular season tournament champions, Ivy champions, Bean Pot champions, one to go, and they'll get ready to go after that on Friday in Providence. And we'll be back with more on Inside Harvard Hockey. Welcome back once again to Inside Harvard Hockey. Bernie Corbett pleased to be joined in our Crimson Profile this week by Ryan Donato. 
the son of Harvard head coach Ted Donato out of Situate, Mass., currently leading the team in scoring. Ryan, thanks very much for your time here. Busy week as the Crimson get ready for the NCAA tournament. Yeah, absolutely. We're all really excited. Been a pretty good uh, run for the Crimson, and uh, you know it is, uh, as you know now, being a sophomore, uh, a long and winding college hockey season. You begin, you hope you're playing four or five months down the road for the big prizes, and uh, so far, your Harvard team has uh, checked all the boxes this year. When you consider uh, the first place finish uh, in the ECAC, sharing that with Union, you didn't share anything else. You have outright Ivy League title, the ECAC championship that you just won. Uh, it's been uh, been uh, very impressive uh, so far in terms of the way this team has pulled together and seems to be playing their best hockey down the stretch. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're getting hot right now, and the good thing is we're healthy, uh, and hopefully we can stay that way, and hopefully we can uh, end up in the end of the year in a good situation. And right now we're all really excited for this weekend games. You, know, you mentioned that about the uh, health factor. It's been a dramatic turnaround for the Crimson this year, and I, I know from, uh, from following the program uh, longstanding, uh, over the last, it seems like the last, I don't know, two or three seasons that uh, the injury bug has really bit. You being a freshman, you can probably remember from last year with some guys that were uh, out from uh, extended periods of time. But uh, this year you've you've kept your core group together, and it's uh, not surprisingly reaped the benefits. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, one of the big things over the last couple of years is we've seen our lineup go down, and uh, especially at this time of the year when it's the season where injuries are more, more prone to happen, and I think uh, – we had a, bit, uh, a lot more concentration on just uh, our health overall, getting the types of things what we're eating and putting in our bodies and uh, in our workouts, uh, making sure we're doing injury prevention type stuff, and I think it's paying off for us. No, in- indeed it is. And anything in particular that uh, you can point to uh, as uh, one of the, uh, obviously, key member of the team, but uh, one of the younger members of the team as a sophomore, but uh, just when you look back, you had a little bit of a difficult stretch. It- it's inevitable over such a long season where, uh, you struggled a little bit. You had a uh, stretch there uh, of uh, a, a short uh, losing streak. But from that point on and uh, through the month of February and well into March, uh, it's been uh, a pretty much uh, a solid run and a very consistent run. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that little uh, the short run where we had where we lost uh, a couple games in a row, I think it was three games in a row, I think uh, that was where we lost our focus and uh, we kind of started – uh, going on our own programs and doing what we wanted and kind of played selfishly. And I think that that hurt us big time. And I think when we bought back into what the coaches were, were giving to us, we were winning games. And uh, so after the loss, we met together as a team and we, we knew what we had to change. And we just had to make sure we bought into our system and it ended up paying off and we started winning games again. You know, it's uh, oftentimes it's a, it's a battle of attrition in college hockey uh, from year to year uh, with players departing a program and elite talent that leaves You've got a situation this year, Ryan, once again, you being a sophomore, you've got uh, really a core group of uh, seven seniors that uh, have been uh, a big impact on the program over their four-year careers. And what, what's it been like to have uh, a team with uh, not just elite talent and great ability, but uh, some really uh, tremendous uh, focus and, and tremendous leadership that's provided by this uh, core group of uh, upperclassmen and seniors? Yeah, absolutely. Our, our seniors are, are really unbelievable on and off the ice. Um, they really do lead for, by example for the younger guys, especially our our freshmen this year. I think uh, something we take away from them is how much time they, and effort they put into the game. They really uh, they put all their effort into the game. We work really hard at practice, and we really make sure we're focused. And we kind of just uh, like lead off of what the seniors do. And uh, the leaders, uh, the seniors, provide a great example of what what needs to be done to be successful. And obviously, they at the beginning of their careers at uh, at Harvard, they weren't always winning, but now they've seen how the culture's changed and uh, how they're starting to win now, and we've been successful, and I think that's something that we take away from them, and we, we, we really try to emulate and put it into our own games so that we can win games as well. And you look at uh, one of those uh, seniors uh, is uh, a big uh, big part of the equation as far as uh, you play in your game, and that's your line mate, uh, one of the assistant captains, one of the veterans having an outstanding senior year, Alexander Kaput. Uh, you're playing uh, currently with him. You've been spending uh, your time with him. And also with uh, Louis Zerta Gossage, a sophomore, just give us a little bit of a perspective of uh, your line mates and uh, how you guys have worked together and how you bring your game to the ice uh, night in and night out. Well, uh, those two guys to play with, first of all, are unbelievable guys. I mean, uh, on and off the ice, unbelievable guys. Alexander Kerfoot, one of the best captains I've ever had. He's 
he really is one of the best playmakers I've ever also played with. I mean, you really just get him the puck and try to get open as best you can because he's going to find you. And I think uh, I'm really happy to be able to play with such a, an unbelievable playmaker. And he's also learned to score a lot this year as well. And he's he's been unbelievable to play with. And he really does have a head for the game and he's a two two way player. And I think that's something I'll I, I usually do watch his game and try to see what he does and try to put it into my own game and try to grow myself as a player as well. And he's He's truly been great for my development and a lot of development for the guys on our team. And then Lewis Sitter Gossage, uh, I'm in the same class as Lewis. He's also been unbelievable. Uh, he's, he's really changed a lot as a player uh, since he's gotten here. I think he's one of our best guys on the team every night. And I think uh, his work ethic on and off the ice of trying to get better and develop, he's, 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 he's really unbelievable. And he's definitely another player where he works really hard down low and he gets to the pucks and he's, he's really good at his job. And he's really developed much uh, since he's been here. Working with those guys uh, with, as uh, line mates and also uh, special teams, a big part of the Crimson success. You've been a big part of that, not only with four goals on the power play, but uh, also you've been uh, very adept at uh, shorthanded. Your three shorthanded goals put you among the leaders in the nation. Yeah, I mean, it, it just goes to show our coaches are, are great. We really just buy into their systems, and uh, it pays off. I mean, our uh, Coach Pearl with power play is is, is truly unbelievable. He, uh we have something new every day that we try to put into our power play, and by the end of the year, we do have like a power play with uh, a million different things that we could try, and we we're all on the same page, and it it really did pay off, and I think uh, that helped us toward the end of the year is having a good power play because uh, as you move on toward the end of the year, there's not as many uh, as many penalties called, and I think we just got to capitalize on the the power plays that we get, and I think Coach Pearl's done a great job with that, and Coach uh, Rass, Coach Rass, he's been unbelievable with the PK. I think uh, if we just buy into the systems uh, that the coaches provided for us, we, we, we have success in our line mates and our, and our power play and our pay found success when we buy into what the coaches uh, tell us to do. Yeah, power play uh, unit uh, currently at 26.5% and uh, your PK at 82.4 and your plus 11 in your opportunities. I always take a, a good look at that in terms of the opportunities, uh, man up as opposed to a man down. Uh, those units have been, uh, have been clicking and, I think sometimes uh, lost uh, in uh, some of the accolades and the recognition is your uh, goaltender, uh, Merrick Madsen. Uh, it's great yeah. to see uh, Merrick get uh, get recognized by the ECAC this week as uh, the goalie of the week and the player of the week for his strong performance in Lake Placid. Yeah, Mer- Merrick is unbelievable. Uh, you can really see it practice. I mean, some of the saves he makes, his work ethic is unbelievable. He's uh, he's really changed as a goalie. I mean, I, I played against him in high school when he was at Proctor until now. It's, it really is unbelievable. His confidence has completely changed, and he's one of the best goalies I've ever had the, the, the chance to play with. And he's uh, he's really great for our team, and he's made a lot of big games, and he's saved up a lot of games as well. And I'm sure he's going to do the same throughout the rest of the tournament. The tests in the ECAC tournament, Ryan, and uh, it's been pretty dramatic uh, for your team. You, you never know who the matchup's going to be, and you get the uh, you get the bye as a result of being the top seed, and and uh, you end up drawing Yale. You end up playing your biggest rival. Uh, who really tested you. you? Had a couple of real, uh, very tough games against Yale. Always tough with a team that's uh, threatening to have to, to uh, put the sticks away and, and take the sweater off. And those two games, I'm sure, uh, you know, really kind of battle tested you for uh, the playoff run there uh, against Yale uh, back a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, obviously it's tough playing against such a great team. At the end of the team, and obviously it's such a great rivalry as well. But I think uh, something that was the benefit was that our guys were really excited. We knew we were going to have a good crowd, and uh, obviously with the rivalry. But I think uh, playing teams like Yale with like a such uh, hard nosed style, I think it was, our team would benefit from that because uh, we learned how to win. Obviously, we were down in the third period both games, and we learned how to come back and win games. And obviously, towards the end of the year, and especially in this tournament, like the games aren't going to be easy to win. And I think uh, our team really learned how to win with these with a, such a great Yale team that's really competitive and hard nosed. I think we had to change up our game a little bit and kind of compete with what they were uh, with what they were doing and I think it, it ended up paying off and I think it'll end up uh, showing in the rest of the year as well. And then you moved on and a team that uh, Harvard uh, has certainly developed you, you go your oldest rival from the state of Connecticut and I'd say well maybe the newest rival with the way the Quinnipiac program has emerged in recent years and uh, you're able to pass that test and it seems like a different guy stepping up uh, on the score sheet uh, that was uh, clearly with uh, Sean Malone's uh, big night offensively with the uh, the hat trick leading the way. Yeah, I mean, uh, the good thing about our team is we have a really deep lineup. And, I mean, uh, we have contributions from every guy every single night. And it's really 
unbelievable to see if we have uh, our top guys in our team that aren't performing, we have other guys that are, are ready to step up right away. And I think that's something that uh, – is really going to show in the rest of the end of the, in the end of the year with uh, this tournament, especially against Providence and uh, the winner of the Air Force in Western Michigan. I think we just uh, we're all really excited. And I think uh, the contributions from everybody up and down the lineup just shows how deep our team is, and uh, I think that's something a lot of teams don't have, and uh, we're lucky to have it. And in order to emerge with that championship on Saturday, it was uh, well the, an ancient rival, and when you think of uh, great college hockey rivalries, Harvard Cornell comes to mind. There's been so many games over the years, and there's been uh, so much on the line oftentimes, more often than not, championships decided. Uh, scoreless game, uh, you got a big goal. Just to take us through that, late in the first period, uh, you were able to get the Crimson on the board and kind of set the tone a bit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, every night, we, every time we play against uh, Cornell, it feels a little bit more like a wrestling match than it does a hockey game. But uh, <laughs> it really, it really is. A, it, it's always a great game against Cornell. They're unbelievable. They always stick to their systems. They're diving in front of shots. But, uh, I think our, our power play unit put it up in the first. I think Foxy set me up pretty nice uh, in the slot for just a shot from the point. And uh, it ended up having a good net perfect presence uh, with Lewis and Chris in front of the net and ended up going in. Um, I think we can just uh, contribute that to our uh, power play setup and what the coaches gave to us. And uh, you started the offense uh, for uh, the Crimson, and uh, you were able to uh, finish it up with uh, two, two goal nights, so good offensive night for you and uh, able to uh, tally a second time. Yeah, absolutely, and I think the other one is also on the power play, too, set up by Fox. Uh, some of the guys we have in our power play are extremely talented, and I think uh, our power play is definitely something that's going to be very important towards the end of the year and make sure we can uh, keep on uh, scoring goals in, in big games. And before we uh, talk a little bit about the NCAA, just uh, some of the uh, the perspective about you, and you, you've really had kind of a unique opportunity and really grown up around the game and uh, with uh, your dad and, and his uh, career in the NHL and and uh, now in 12th season at, at Harvard. He really, uh, for most of your life uh, as as a hockey player and an awareness of hockey, he's been the Harvard head coach. Your your roots uh, go uh, very deep uh, with the with the Harvard uh, program that you now represent. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been around the rink uh, for uh, ever since my dad got the coaching job here. It's been a long time, and uh, I've seen how the the program has developed in, the, in its culture and uh I bought in as soon as I can. I mean, I've always wanted to go here. I'm thankful and I'm blessed to be able to attend Hart and get the education here while playing hockey. And I mean, my dad, uh, I've, uh, I really do trust in what he says and what he does. And he, he really led me in the right direction to pick a great school. And it wasn't just because hmm. he was a coach here. It was because I, I wanted to go here and I've seen how the culture's changed. And that's one of the big reasons why. We've been getting a lot of big recruits as well, and uh, I, I think our Harvard hockey is really heading in the right direction, and I'm really happy to be a part of it. And with that family theme, you played at the Dexter School for my old pal from BU, D- Danny Donato, uh, your uncle, great uh, great athlete, and uh, certainly has established himself very well in the coaching ranks on his own. Yeah, absolutely. He was uh, one of the best coaches I've ever had. It was awesome playing for him and him and uh, Brian McCulloch and Matt Lombardi. Uh, it, honestly, uh, that time at Dexter, we did was one of the biggest uh, developments and growth in my game. I think uh, being able to have every night where I had a couple guys covering me and uh, getting touches on the puck and being on the power play, it really did help. And uh, my uncle Danny, uh, I really got used to that family feel, uh, which I have now with my dad. I, I know that was going to be an issue going into college and having your father as a coach, but I was lucky to have my uncle as a coach in high school, so I kind of understand uh, how, how the territories work of uh, having a family member being in the coaching staff at, at the rank, but Mm. He's gone. It's either your dad or your uncle, and I, uh, I'm just really lucky to have those two guys be such a big part of my uh, hockey career so far. Well, I talked to you, and I talked to your dad today, and, and I mentioned to your dad. I said I think I should maybe be talking to your mother about maybe the power play or something later on. Yeah, she, she uh, <laughs> my mom, my mom doesn't get enough credit. Honestly, she, uh, she's unbelievable. She does a lot for me, and uh, and a lot of the things that me and my brother, me and my, me and my brother Jack and Nolan, uh, we're a lot bigger than my dad already, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that comes from her side of the family, and she doesn't really get enough credit. So hopefully, she's listening to this uh, one day, and she can uh, she can thank me for it. So it, indeed, I'm, I'm sure that'll be uh, that'll be down the road for you, no question. And uh, well, Ryan, it was uh, it was a pleasure to have you, and, and now on to the uh, I have an opportunity to talk now on the NCAA tournament, and uh, it'll it'll be a Providence team, uh, Harvard and Providence. Not a lot of recent history between the two. Uh, Harvard, the number one seed, three overall. Providence, the uh, the number four seed and fourteenth uh, overall in the tournament, and you'll be playing close to home and a chance for friends and uh, family and uh, fans of uh, Crimson Nation will be able to turn out and uh, support the team on Friday. 
Yeah, uh, we're really excited for that. We uh, really can't wait. I think uh, something different that we've had in the last couple of years uh, is, uh, is really our students buying into the games and wanting to attend the games. And I think uh, we've had good student sections in the last couple of games, and I think uh, now our school is kind of buying into the hockey program and our hockey program is developing, and we're just really excited to be able to play uh, in such a big game in front of friends and family and uh, other students. And uh, I can't wait till Friday, and I'm sure the rest of my team can as well. Absolutely. The Crimson with the nation's longest unbeaten streak at 15 and counting and looking forward to Friday against Providence. And as you mentioned earlier, Air Force and Western Michigan and the other regional matchup there with uh, the winner, uh, the winners looking to advance to the regional final on Saturday. Ryan, thanks very much. And uh, after having a chance to make your acquaintance here, uh, I can't imagine why Paul Career was playing any jokes on you or any pranks back in the day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's funny that you mentioned that. I sure my dad said something about that earlier. That's off. <laughs> but you had a pretty good uh, fallback there for Timo Solani to become your new favorite there as, as a, a very young man. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, I was lucky to be able to be around those type of guys uh, growing up. Right. It was really special. It, it, indeed. Best of luck, Ryan, moving forward uh, this weekend awesome. uh, with the Crimson. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ryan Donato, sophomore forward for the Harvard Crimson, currently leading the team in goals. Out of Situate Mass, our guest here, and we'll be back.